The Tony Rose Show, D93, and we are joined by one of the uh, one of the best out there. You know him from great movies, Three uh, Three Men and a Baby. You know him from uh, Cocoon, and of course, uh, his legendary role in Police Academy. And of course, this Saturday night on How to Murder Your Husband on Lifetime with the legendary Sybil Shepherd. It is the one and only Steve Gutenberg. Steve, good morning, sir. How you doing? Good morning. Really grateful to be here, and I wish you guys. A lot of good health and success. Oh my goodness! How how are things going for you? Of course, uh, seeing you back on the on the screen this Saturday night alongside Sybil Shepherd, uh, telling the story of Nancy Crampton uh, Brophy. Right, kind of catches up to speed for the folks who may not know the backstory of this story that you guys are going to tell on Saturday night. Sure, we've got a, a, a an interesting story about Daniel and Nancy Brophy who were living in Portland, Oregon. She was a writer. He was a chef. They had real financial problems. So the way that her husband, that Nancy uh, decided to solve the problems was to take out an insurance policy on her husband, murder him, collect the money. Problem is that she ordered the gun online. She started writing a blog called How to Murder Your Husband. And um, she was actually allegedly... Uh, uh, she thought about that she murdered him, but she was convicted and put in jail. And it was really exciting for me. I got to work with a wonderful actress, Sybil Shepherd, who I have been in love with since Taxi Driver and Moonlighting. Uh, and uh, and the picture came out really well. It was beautifully written. And I think we're going to get a great audience on Saturday night. Yeah, uh, Saturday night, 7 o'clock local time here. On uh, on Lifetime, uh, working alongside uh, Sybil Shepherd there. So so through y'all's careers, your paths never crossed until this. I mean, uh, through through all the movies and shows and everything. This is this the first time that you guys have ever really crossed paths when you came on set for this one? Yeah, this is the first time I worked with Sybil, and I was bowled over. You know, when she walks in, she's a big presence. She's five right. eleven. She was a supermodel, so she's gorgeous. Right. Uh, and, you know, all the wonderful movies she's been in, which would be classics, and then Moonlighting. So when I got to work with her, I was thrilled, and she did a beautiful job. She was pure evil. So when you watch this show on Saturday night on Lifetime, you'll be blown away. She was great. How, how do you prepare uh, as an actor for a role based on a, a real-life situation? Obviously, we've seen you in some you know, real out-of-this-world situations in, in movies in the past, but how do you prepare for a role based on real life? How much research do you look into the character that you're playing, and how much do you just kind of read the headlines and kind of try to make the script and, and, and the scenes your own? Well, what's terrific about playing a, a true-to-life person is that there's lots of information about them. You go online and you watch videos, you listen to their voice, you watch how they walk, you watch what they've written, what they've read, you find out about their past, and then you create the character based on what they look like. So I had a wonderful makeup artist who was uh, was just terrific, and a terrific hair and makeup, and we created a character that looked like Daniel Brophy. So it's quite an experience to play someone who's true to life. You want to also honor them and respect who they are. And, and obviously the families that are still, you know, who are going to be watching this too or, or seeing it and things like that, knowing that, that you're kind of upholding uh, the memory as well, mm-hmm. I guess, because you're creating a piece that's going to be there forever for them, I guess, right? Yeah, but you see the difference is this is not a feel, this is not one of those yeah. feel-good stories about, you know, a good Samaritan. This is right. about murder. Right. So it's, you know, you're, you, <clears throat> the, the, the barometer and your compass isn't picked on as much as you want to create a true-to-life story about somebody who is saving homeless people. Right. This is about a guy who loved his wife, and she blew his head off. Yeah. So, you know, it, you, you're, you have to direct yourself in the right vein because <clears throat> it's... Uh, it's it's not a beautiful. It's, you're not painting a beautiful picture. Yeah. You're painting a uh, a, a, a dynamic story uh, that is violent. So I think that's the attraction, and I think that's why we're going to get a big audience. You know, people love, and, and including me, we love to watch desperados. Yeah, and we love to watch, you know, people who do quote unquote bad things, and that's what this movie's about. And I think. Uh, People are, are really going to be satisfied and amazed. And I think what's interesting about the picture is you'll come away from it going, how could she do that? Yeah. And that's, uh, 
And that's a great part of, uh, of entertainment. How could you do that? Uh, the legendary Steve Gutenberg uh, on the show with us. Before we let you get out of here, I just want to thank you again for bringing us so many iconic movies and so many iconic roles. Did you know when you were doing the Police Academy world or the Three Men and a Baby and Cocoon that you were creating something that would still be part of our pop culture reference and just part of life as we know it uh, years and decades later? Just legendary pieces of work. Did you have any idea of what you guys were getting into when you were doing those? Thank you. You know, I, I, I love my career. I've been doing the same thing for 47 years. I wake up, I have a cup of coffee, I have breakfast, I call my family and friends, and I go to work. So some days you get up and you do, you paint a picture that people want to buy. Sometimes you paint a picture that nobody wants to buy. But you're, you're an artist. Yeah. And I've, you always know when you have something. You always know when something starts to work. You get a feeling, sort of like, you walk into a restaurant and you smell the food. You haven't even seen it yet, but you know that it's going to be good. And that's how it is, I think, in the arts. And the fact is, people like yourself in radio or myself in, 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 in film and television and stage, we are so lucky to make a living at what we're doing. The chances are so small that you can put on the heat and send your kids to school, buy clothes, by being an artist. And I think we're all very, very lucky. So it's been pretty good. Well, thank you for bringing us so much joy uh, with your work over the years, and we look forward to seeing a different side of it as well Saturday night, How to uh, Murder Your Husband on Lifetime, 7 o'clock locally, uh, Sybil Shepherd and the one and only Steve Gutenberg in there as well. Thank you so much for the time today. Continue best of luck, and let's chat again soon, okay? Absolutely. I wish you good health and success.